Hi there. My name is Jim Jasinski. I'm with Ohio State University Extension, the Integrated Pest Management Program. And today I'm going to talk to you more about spotted wing Drosophila management. Now in prior videos, we've talked about how to set traps up, we've talked about how to empty those traps and how to identify the male and female spotted wing that might be in that sample. And today we're going to take a look at what happens after you've been in the season for a few weeks, you've been spraying for a few weeks, and maybe you want to check to see how well your spray program is doing. One of the ways that we do that is we actually look at the fruit to see if there's any spotted wing larvae in the fruit. That's going to be a measure of how well your spray program is doing. So what do we need to get started with? Well, we're going to need some of that fruit that you've picked from your patch or from your vineyard, whatever the small fruit might be. We're going to need some water, measuring cup. We're going to need a canister to put all this together in. Uh, early on, we used to use Ziploc bags. And Ziploc bags are great and easy to get, except when you put a sample in there that might fall over and the contents might leak out. We then went to these taller quart size containers, which are great because they can't tip over, but because they're tall, all the fruit kind of stacks up on itself and sometimes that might trap the larvae beneath there. So we've kind of moved away from using these taller quart cylinders and now we're using these more flat design. And so all the contents, the fruit and the salt water is going to go inside of here. Now the fruit's still going to float up. So to try to keep that fruit down and separate the larvae that come up, we're going to use something like this. This is a piece of hardware cloth. Uh, that's about a quarter inch in terms of mesh size. And once we put the fruit and the salt water in here, we'll put this on top and that'll actually weigh down the fruit and help separate out the larvae. Uh, moving on, we're gonna need some regular table salt. We'll need a measuring spoon and maybe something like some measuring cups and that'll come in to uh, play when we talk about the fruit. And then uh, either a spoon to mix with or maybe even a potato masher. And I'll talk about what that could be used for uh, just here briefly. So the first step is to figure out how many berries we're going to use. Typically for raspberries or blackberries we would just pick a number anywhere from 25 to 75. Uh, when you have blueberries it tend to be a little bit smaller so I just go by the amount that I have. So if I want a cup or a half a cup or something like that just whatever you decide on just be consistent so that you have some idea relative every time you do the salt water test as to how many larvae are actually being floated here i've got some blueberries instead of counting them out i'm going to just put in a cup roughly so i'm going to sprinkle these in here so that's more or less a cup right there okay we'll just go ahead and dump those right in uh, and now comes the chance to add the salt water. The salt water actually irritates the larvae and drives them out of the fruit if they're in there. Uh, the secret formula is for every eight ounces of water or every cup of water, one tablespoon of salt. So you're gonna need around 24 to 32 ounces of liquid for every sample that you do. So we're gonna pour out 32 ounces of water right here. That should do it. And that's gonna be the equivalent of four tablespoons of salt. So here's my tablespoon measure. Here's the salt. So it goes in. There's one. And there's four. Okay. So if the water is slightly warm, that's okay because it helps dissolve the salt a little bit quicker. But don't use hot water because that might kill the larvae and prevent them from actually swimming out of the fruit and into the liquid and then floating up to the top. So we give it a quick stir. We're going to go ahead and add some water. We'll put our screen on top of there to help weigh those fruit down. Okay, that should be about good. So a couple of the blueberries have escaped around the side, but primarily everything is in here. You're gonna want about uh, an inch or so of headspace between the fruit and the top of the liquid. That metal screen really does help press the fruit down, let the larvae float up. So now we're gonna go ahead and wait for about 10 to 15 minutes and let the salt water do its magic. And we'll come back and we'll take a look and see if there's anything in here. This is an overhead shot of the blueberries and salt water mixture. If there were any larvae, they would be floating in the top of the water. The larvae are translucent or whitish in color and no larger than a grain of rice. In this next photo, you can see arrows pointing towards second and third instar larvae. In the next photo, you see raspberries that also have larvae floated out of them. In the final photo, you see again raspberries that are very heavily infested with the spotted wing larvae. 
So even though we looked and didn't find any spotted wing larvae, that's okay. That tells us that these store-bought fruit are perfectly clean. In addition to using salt water, some tests require or use sugar water. The advantage is in the sugar water, it does not kill the larvae in case you decide to rear them into adulthood for positive identification. Something else I wanted to show you was we talked about using the more taller container if you have those around. And then I talked about the potato masher. Now, if you don't have a screen like I use for this uh, more flat container, use a smaller potato masher to gently push down the berries inside the container. Don't crush them, because if you crush them, you're gonna have a lot of small pieces to try to sort through to try to find the larvae. Just use it again to push the berries down into the liquid and see if the larvae are floating up on top. So that's it. That's the basic steps of doing a saltwater test to try to determine if there are spotted wing drosophila larvae in your fruit. I hope this video was helpful to you. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me.